Hey guys, I'm John Legrand, also known on uh, my channel here as Legrandzilla, and I wanted to make a safety video today, especially in light of uh, some of the questions about uh, what age groups uh, are appropriate for certain channels. I wanted to share some things uh, about my channel and uh, what I do to uh, help you know that even though some of the end results might be appealing to all ages, making what I make and learning from me and, and uh, trying to do the same thing is not for people under 14, 15 years old, maybe even older, uh, without uh, very close supervision uh, from an adult. An adult. Uh, I used to be a safety director uh, in my previous life uh, when I uh, had a real job. That was one of the hats I wore besides quality and uh, improvement projects, things like that. But my hobby has always been uh, to make uh, dioramas and build models and things. And, uh, you know, whether it be a bust like this or uh, whether it be a diorama, which I prefer to do, and that's kind of what I want to focus on here, is uh, not so much the different kinds of kits. You know, there's styrene, which I really don't do too much of anymore. That is for younger uh, people uh, uh, for the most part, but as you get into the resin kits like this or uh, vinyl, there are certain aspects to building them that is a little more of a safety issue, and so I want to kind of share some of those safety issues with you uh, so that you know what you're up against if you get into the hobby. Um, this, as I said, is a, is a resin kit and uh, it's just a bust and it's small that's why i chose it uh, so with this it's just a matter of cleaning it up uh, you know uh, uh, gluing it together things like that and so we'll talk about that um, one of the, what we'll do is uh, i'll start out with the first thing is like when i make a diorama i use usually use this uh, kind of material this is uh, a uh, piece of uh, foam insulation. You can get it in different thicknesses depending on what I'm doing. Uh, I may use a thicker piece. Sometimes if I want to make like a deep hole or something I'll use a thicker piece. If I want to make mountains and contours I'll do that. But I'll start out with a sheet like this. And uh, the safety issues with this is uh, I use a Dremel uh, rotary tool to uh, to shape it. I also have used hot knives. I don't have one now. Uh, I've kind of gotten away from using the hot knives because they seem to keep breaking. Uh, but uh, uh, they do work if you want a, a nice clean edge. But they're hard to get uh, to go uh, around all the areas. So usually I have to use a like an X-Acto knife, which these are very sharp. I have cut my thumb before uh, cleaning up a vinyl kit one time uh, to the point where I still have nerve damage in that thumb. Cut it really deeply. Uh, so you always want to be careful with those and when you're using a, a knife, use a Kevlar glove at least in, in your free hand uh, so that you don't cut yourself. That's what I do now. Lesson learned. Anyway, let's say I want to make this into a diorama and you may have seen some of my diorama bases Here's one I'll show you. You can see on the bottom that it's got that purple color, so it's the same thing. But I, I shaped this piece, and this is part, a three-part diorama, part of one. And uh, I, I chose this to show you uh, several things, but we we'll just look at the, the shape of this. Um, and I put rubble and things, and then I used great stuff, insulation foam, to uh, make this explosion and uh, then I painted it. Uh, I'll talk more about great stuff in a minute. But let's, uh, let's talk about when uh, I want to shape my piece. Usually I rough cut it with a knife or even a box cutter knife, something bigger than this. And uh, as I said, I use the gloves. And then when I'm getting ready to, uh, to make the shape, I take a, an older bit usually uh, and I put it in this, uh, this is a Dremel, a rotary tool. There's other tools out there, but I like this one. And it's got different speeds, and uh, you can put different uh, bits in there. 
And this one is a diamond uh, covered uh, uh, bit that if you were running it and you touched yourself, uh, you, you would get a pretty good abrasion. I have one here from using a Dremel a few months ago that's finally starting to heal that still shows. Um, the problem is you don't really want to use a glove when you're using a rotary tool because it can catch the fabric of the glove and pull you into it. So uh, you just have to be really careful. That's why this is more of an adult uh, thing to use. When you're using these, uh, let's say you're trying to clean the seam lines off a kit like this, uh, you'll want to use uh, safety glasses. I use these uh, a lot of times because they'll go right over my uh, other glasses, which I need to see. Maybe better yet, you might want to use uh, goggles like these because it's uh, even less likely you can get something in from the side. So when you're using this, and I usually have a deck back here, I usually go out on the deck on a warm day to do anything with my Dremel because it makes a terrible mess, it makes a lot of dust which is a reason why you might, might want to use a nuisance dust mask to keep that uh, fine powders from the resin or even from the, uh, um, the insulation foam from getting uh, in your lungs and into your uh, nose. Um, the thing too, if you're using any kind of a heat on this, it puts out toxic fumes, so you should do it outside. And again, it's not something for um, young people that without experience to do. So uh, the Dremel can be a problem uh, with flying debris, it can be a problem with hurting you. Uh, there are bits that I use when I want to cut something uh, like a piece of metal or a piece of wood that's maybe thicker. Uh, it actually has a, a, a big blade and those things can kick and you could uh, definitely hurt yourself very badly with those. So. Whenever you're using a Dremel, be super careful with them. So let's say I have shaped my piece, I've cut around I, with the Dremel, I've made my contours and things, high, low spots and all that. What I like to do then is I use a heat gun. And the heat gun is kind of a multi-purpose tool as well. can be used uh, for a lot of things. As it, it says here, caution, hot surface, avoid contact. I believe these get to be like 700 degrees Fahrenheit, or can. Uh, there's two speeds as far as the blower. You want to be careful not to get your whatever you're doing too close to here because if the heat goes back, you can ruin the, uh, the, um, the heat gun. But what I'll do is I'll, uh, once I have the shape, I'll, I'll run the heat gun over it carefully because it'll melt it. As it melts it, it does put out fumes. Uh, you can also melt styrene and things like that with this, so you want to be careful using it. And then be careful where you set it when you're done. It's got a, a thing so you can put it down on a table, but it could tip over like this, and if you have anything like paper or anything, it could start a fire. So be really careful with that. Uh, set that out of my way here. Again, you might want to use a heat uh, a glove like this or some kind of glove to protect your hand from the heat. Um, another gloves I use is I, I always keep a stack of these uh, uh, synthetic vinyl uh, examination gloves. Uh, latex. Some people are uh, uh, are allergic to latex, so this is a latex-free glove. Uh, I'm not allergic to latex that I know of, but I just get these uh, just so that they're good for anyone. Um, it also saves uh, trees if you don't use the latex gloves. But anyway, uh, these are good for when uh, airbrushing, uh, so you don't get the paint on your hands, uh, uh, when you do on all kinds of things. But one of the main reasons I like to have these on is when I'm using the great stuff. Now, I don't have a can of great stuff right now. I only buy that when I have a specific project I want it for. Uh, maybe I have a hollow uh, bust head that um, has pretty thin resin and I want to shore it up. Uh, I may take great stuff and spray it in there, but you got to be really careful because it can overflow. You put it about half as much as you think you want to fill the thing and then it just keeps growing. I've had it come out on me and uh, one time I had my gloves on and everything like I should. 
I put uh, 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 the head upside down in a box with uh, papers around it so I wouldn't make a mess. I went out in my garage. I put I sprayed in the great stuff, and um, when I did that, uh, looked like everything was fine. It looked like it had cured, but down in the bottom it hadn't quite cured, and I was in a hurry. So I wanted to do the the, the bottom part close to the uh, base of the bust uh, where the neck is. I wanted to fill it with this uh, Durham's water putty, which I'll talk a little bit more about later, but it's good stuff. Uh, and when I put that in as, as a liquid, it went down and it forced the uh, uncured uh, great stuff out and all over my um, bust, which in this case was a uh, bust of Gamera, which there's only six in the world and it cost me $1,000, which is one of the most expensive kits I own. So I was like, oh no, and I'd already take my gloves off. I knew that you could reduce the great stuff with uh, acetone, which is another chemical that is very flammable and can cause problems with the, uh, your skin. Not really safe for uh, anyone to use that's not an adult. Uh, I put some of that on there. It still kept bubbling up. I took acetone and I tried wiping it off the model. I succeeded in salvaging everything, but I got great stuff on my fingers. So I washed it off with acetone. Uh, ever since then, which is like two years ago, especially when the weather gets cold, I get dermatitis on my fingers, right where that was touching. And it itches and it, it burns, it turns red. I'll bump my finger or even one of my fingernails will hit another finger and I'll get a big welt and it hurts. And that was really not worth it. Uh, so be really careful with great stuff. Uh, what I did to make this was I took a piece of cardboard and uh, then I made like a stick coming out of that and then I uh, made a, a small ball out of, uh, I think it was um, just more paper. And I just uh, put some of that great stuff on there sparingly and it just grows and it makes what I think looks kind of like a uh, nuclear explosion or something or a, a fire. So. Uh, I used that to make this explosion. I had this for quite a few years and decided to use this on a project. Uh, speaking of the uh, Durham's water putty, when uh, I have a container that uh, I've used it and it's uh, coated on a plastic container, usually something I'll throw away, like a yogurt cup or something, I, uh, I, I crack it off and then I put it in a jar and I can reuse it to use it for rubble. So that's one of the things I do. So this is an example, maybe not the best example, but it's something I can make with the foam uh, insulation, Durham's water putty, and uh, great stuff foam. Now, Durham's water putty. This stuff, uh, you mix it and it's pretty liquid. It's like a consistency like milk at first, but then it thickens up pretty quickly. And what I do is I coat my, uh, my bases, my foam, with this to give a good hard um, uh, cover on there. I can make hills and mountains, rocks. I can pour it into rubber castings to uh, that make it make looks like rock. Uh, but this stuff uh, uh, hardens really fast. It's really kind of tricky to work with if if you're pouring it into something like I'll pour it in the bottom of the feet of a vinyl kit to to make them. Uh, make it uh, able to stand better. Uh, that works fine. Uh, and usually I don't have problems with that, but if I'm working, trying to work fast and paint it on a big diorama, I usually try to do it in smaller sections because it dries really quick. And if you have extra and you want to get rid of it, do not pour it down the drain or in your toilet or anything like that because it'll just harden up in your plumbing and then you'll have a big expense. So do not pour this stuff down the drain. Um, I usually uh, let it dry, and crack it, and then I, I'll use it for rubble. Uh, but uh, if you're going to pour it out, pour it out in uh, a flower bed or something like that. It's, uh, it's safe for that, but it doesn't shrink. It's pretty good stuff. Um, another thing I use is uh, resin. Again, this is something that takes a, uh, 
in like a minute, it'll harden. So you got to work fast. You got to take the two parts, put them together, mix it quickly, and then pour it or you do it however you want. You don't want to get this on you. It, it gets hot as it's curing. Uh, so this is something to be careful with. Use eye protection, use gloves when you work with this stuff. Another thing, I like this epoxy clay and there's also epoxy sculpt and other things that uh, Aves makes and uh, this is a two-part epoxy. Uh, you put the two parts together in equal amounts, roll it together. I use uh, gloves when I'm handling this as well. They also have a, a solvent you can use. Uh, but I usually just use water, and then you can uh, you can make uh, repairs. Uh, you can fill seams, things like that. I use other products to fill seams that I don't think are too much toxic. Usually, uh, Liquitex, things like that. It can make a mess, and you want to be careful using it. Uh, another thing I use, we get into painting a little bit. Uh, when I'm going to prime, uh, particularly like a resin kit. Uh, or vinyl, you can't just use, since I do use oils, I like to prime with uh, something safe. And you got to be careful what you use or you can, uh, it, it won't dry if you use just any uh, paint or primer that's not acrylic. So generally I start with acrylics, but I prime with this uh, automotive primer. And this stuff is sandable and such, but uh, you want to make sure you have plenty of uh, ventilation using this and uh, keep it off your hands. As far as painting, uh, I usually start out using an airbrush. Here's, here's one of my airbrushes. It's kind of have seen better days, but I just wanted to show you what they look like. It hooks up to a compressor, so I have compressed air. Compressed air is something that can be a safety issue as well. Uh, so be careful. Don't spray in your face. Use a dust mask. Use gloves. There's different things. Uh, like uh, as you're airbrushing, this is a reducer. This is something that is not to be uh, in reach of children, uh, something that you don't want to get in your eyes. So be careful using these kinds of products. Uh, some of the paints uh, actually are known to uh, or possibly cause cancer. So again, use plenty of ventilation if you can and uh, uh, dust mask. Another thing I use sometimes to paint are these pearl pigments. They're really fine. The dust can go in the air. It's hard to get rid of. It's kind of like glitter uh, in that sense. And you know how that can be. It just gets everywhere. Uh, I usually put that on with a... I can mix it with a, like a, a medium, like a, a clear medium or even other paints. Uh, but usually I'll, I'll, I'll brush it on and I'll spray it with dull coat, which is what I use to seal a lot of my work after I've uh, uh, painted. Um, and uh, this stuff has, is toxic to breathe. Uh, it's uh, something you want to use with plenty of ventilation. And uh, don't spray it in your face or anything like that. Keep out of reach of children. Okay, let's see here. Oh, when you're, uh, when you're doing a, a, a resin kit, Usually what you need to do, I use my Dremel to, to drill holes so that I can put pins. And I make, uh, usually I use like a, a wire clothes hanger uh, uh, to make my pins or just buy wire. But uh, usually got to cut it. And so when you're cutting uh, a pin, you know, you want to use something like this. And be careful when you're cutting, you can pinch yourself, you can cut yourself. If you're not careful, and I've also had one that I've cut that the the if you're not careful, the piece can fly off and run. Uh, you know, had it shoot off and never found it again. It could actually shoot into your eyes, so be careful with that. Okay, am I forgetting anything? Generally, I just want to say be really careful when you're building models whether it's vinyl or resin, whether you're making a diorama, whatever you're doing, there's going to be along the way certain things that are uh, safety concerns. So just want to encourage you to be really careful. Don't do this if you're too young to do it. Uh, uh, have your, uh, your uh, 
uh, dad or somebody or uh, an older adult help you um, uh, do this kind of thing uh, if you're uh, if you're like uh, you know 15 or or younger but uh, pretty much you know I wanted to share this and it's kind of one of the reasons why my videos I don't feel are for kids uh, I don't want to uh, uh, target any, any audience necessarily I, I want uh, want it to be general and uh, family oriented but um, but please be careful and, and this kind of activity is something that should be done by an experienced hobbyist so thanks for watching and I hope this is helpful um, uh, be careful and be safe thanks bye